Hi everyone, I am Chris. This is Simply Classic and today we're going to take some inspiration and creativity once again to make a hack for a Simply Classic pattern. So first thing I'm going to do is tell you where we found it. So we went through so magical in Florida. Everything was fantastic. We stayed an extra day and the guys went and played golf. Leah and I went shopping. And we walked into a SAS store, an S-A-S, and that stands for San Antonio Shoe. And they, of course, are a shoe store, but have accessories. And we were walking up and down the aisles, and Leah said, hey, come here, you gotta look at this bag. So I walked over, and this is what she showed me. So as soon as I saw it, I thought, oh, well, that's a Bertram. It's just a little different. So that's what we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to make this bag here and we're going to make it with the Bertram. So if you're not familiar with the Bertram, this here is what it is. We have a um, nice zipper here on the back. So let's talk about differences first. And I'm gonna start with size. So the SAS bag is nine inches wide and our Bertram is seven and a half. The SAS bag is eight inches high, ours is seven and a half, and it is four and a half inches deep. Ours is only three. We are going to make some changes with the size of the bag because if we don't, when we put our clasp right here in the center, we're not gonna get that kind of bubbling or, or um, curve effect because our bag isn't wide enough, okay? So we'll go over all those pattern changes in just a minute. So of course, one of the most obvious changes is the way the bag closes. So you can see here in the photo that the SAS bag has a mat or turn lock here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. One thing I did not like about this SAS bag is it has, you can see here, it has two zippers that had pockets going here and here. And once the bag was pulled in, you really couldn't access those pockets. I opened up the pockets and put my hand in there and the pockets weren't very big. I mean, the bag isn't very big. So I really didn't like that part. So we're gonna skip that and we're just going to go ahead and do our normal zipper pocket like this. I'm gonna throw up another picture here. This is the interior of the bag. And you can see here that it has a center divider, which we will do. The center divider does not have a zipper, so we're not gonna put one on. And then other than that, it just has a slip pocket and a zipper pocket, just like we normally do. The strap connectors, you'll see, are sewn into the side of the back. You can certainly do that. However, again, you've got two i'm always concerned about bulk and we have our upper lining we have our main bag that's coming together right here in the seam and then in addition we're going to put more bulk in there which is another four layers of faux so i'm not going to do that i'm just going to do the strap connector the way the pattern is written we're going to rivet it on after it's done the other thing on this bag is i had a chain uh, handle, which you can certainly do. We actually have some chains that you can buy and use for the bag. I've decided that I'm just going to do a regular strap on it, but I'm not going to make it a crossbody. I'm going to make it just like a little shoulder strap, something tight that you could hold into your um, body. The only other thing I'm going to mention is that this bag in person was stunning. It was, I think the price on it is to like $250 or $225, something like that. And with it being white with the black accent at the top, it was really, in my opinion, like a, an evening bag. It was just beautiful. They had some, they didn't have any online, but in the store they had some that had a brown bottom with a brown top and the top was um, like a textured leather where the bottom was just a solid leather. So that's another option for you. What you might be able to do is maybe quilt the top or do some kind of embroidery on the top um, and then use that as the band or just do two totally different colors, two coordinating colors, whatever you want to do. 
you're going to see today that we're actually using our white and black dogwood floral and also our black faux leather with some lilas linen for the interior. So let's go over pattern changes first. Let's start out by talking about pattern pieces. So on the measurements I give you in the pattern, you are going to cut your exterior piece one and a half inches wider. You're going to do the same height, no different there. Your triangle, or excuse me, your squares here at the bottom are going to be two by two instead of the measurement I give you in the pattern. So you're going to cut two of those out for your main body. You're going to do exactly the same size for your lining. So typically your lining is smaller because you have an upper lining, but in this case, our upper lining and our exterior band are going to be the same size. So these two pieces are going to be exactly the same size. Okay. So do exactly the same thing for your lining. You're going to put some woven interfacing on the back of your lining pieces, just like normal on the back of your main pieces. You're going to use some deck of a light. You're going to cut the deck of a light an inch and a half wider in the same height. And as you can see, when you fuse it on, you don't fuse it on this bottom section because we're going to be putting some decoville heavy there. That's going to be obviously the bottom of the bag. I went ahead and put the zipper pocket in already. There's nothing different there than the original Bertram pattern. So if you need a refresher, you can go back and look at that video, but I put the zipper an inch and a half below this top here. We have an interior zipper pocket, which I've already put the zipper on. We have a zipper overlay that I cut. We have an interior slip pocket, which I already put together. Y'all have seen me do this before. And you can refer back to the original video if you need any help with that. I also did a key fob. So all that's the same. You're going to cut four pieces that are now the same width as your main bag in your lining. So you have your main bag piece here. This is going to be the exact same width. We're going to sew this on the top. And the height of it is three inches. So you're going to cut four of those. You're going to put Decaville light on the back and you're going to keep it out of the seam allowances. So two of these are going to be for the upper lining. Two of these are going to be for that exterior band. The other extra piece you want to cut is a divider. So we are starting out with a piece that's nine inches wide by 16 inches tall. It does have woven views on the back. And then the last piece that is different is going to be your bottom, either Decoville heavy or Peltex piece. You want to, whatever the width I told you in the pattern, you're going to add three quarters of an inch to it. You're going to add one inch to the height and that's going to give you what you need. The other thing is you're going to need a, some kind of strap or handle. You can use the chain straps that we have. You can just order one of those, or I'm going to go ahead and use just a regular strap. I'm not going to make it a crossbody. I'm just going to make it in a regular bag. I cut this 30 inches and of course I already made my strap. You're going to need a couple of D rings, a couple of swivel clasps if you want, or you can just attach it directly to the bag, which is probably going to be what I do. Um, I might even use rectangle rings here instead of the D rings, since I'm not going to have a swivel clasp on there. I think I might end up doing that, switching these out. And then of course you need a twist lock. So even though the, the size of the bag is changing, the pattern changers are really not that much. You're just cutting a couple of pieces a little bigger, a little wider or whatnot. Um, and then by adding that band is going to give us the additional height that we need. And also by cutting those two inch rectangles or squares at the bottom, instead of what I give you in the pattern, I think the pattern is one and a half inches. That's going to help with the depth that we need. It's going to give us that additional inch of depth. So two by two right here. Okay. So let's get sewing. Let's start with the exterior of the bag. So I have my two exterior pieces here. And again, the zipper's already attached to one of them. We're going to take two of our bands and we're just going to clip them to the top of each piece, one, one on each piece. Okay. 
Now I cut my Decoville light one inch narrower and one inch shorter so I could take a half inch seam allowance here. Okay, from here we're going to flip this top band up, keep your seam allowance towards the top of the bag, and we're going to top stitch, capturing that seam allowance underneath. So from here, we are going to put our bottoms together and stitch the bottom. And again, I'm going to use a half inch seam allowance to do this. Now we want this seam to lay nice and flat. So I'm going to open it up and I'm going to top stitch down either side. Or both sides, I should say, not either. Both of them. So just make sure your seam allowance is open. Do the same thing down the other side. So now that we have this bottom sewn, we can put our Decoville Heavy right in the center. Now you should have just a slight, slight like eighth of an inch, maybe even less than eight, a sixteenth of an inch space between your Decoville light on your main pieces and your Decoville heavy. And what that's going to do is allow your bag to fold up nicely without having any problems. So I'm going to, and you also want to center it widthwise. Okay. So I'm keeping it a half inch away from the sides here and just about a sixteenth of an inch away from the deck of a light. I'm going to go fuse this on and then we'll go ahead and sew our sides. Okay, our deck of all heavy is fused on. If you want feet on this bag, you would go ahead and add those feet now. I'm not going to put any on this one. So we're going to fold this right sides together and just like we typically do, we want to make sure that these two seams here where our top edges come together match. I'm going to cut the bulk out by just sliding my scissors in here and cutting this at an angle. And that's just going to help a little bit reduce the bulk. I'm going to do that on all sides. And then we will match those seams. Now I'm going to match the seam first. I'm going to make sure everything is exactly perfect and put a clip 
and do the same thing on the other side. And then when I sew these side seams, that's where I'm going to start, is here on each side. And then I'll sew the rest of the way, they, the way down and up. But where the most important point where I want it to match is where I'm going to start. So I'm going to clip these together. And then we will stitch using a half inch seam allowance starting right there at those points. Even if our tops don't match exactly right, if we didn't do something perfectly correct with our seam allowance here or maybe our cutting, you still do not want to match up the top. You want to match up these seams here. So I'm going to go ahead and put my needle in and then I can go ahead and remove that upper clip and we're going to go backwards up. and then come back down. We're going to repeat on this side. So I'm going to make sure those are matched up exactly right. Put my needle in, hold it together and then go backwards. So from here, we're going to box our corners. But I do want to make sure that these seams are opened when I do that. I'm going to put some double-sided tape on here just to kind of hold that down. And I'm just going to use some quarter inch. You can certainly use some duct tape or something else, glue, if you want. You could cut them down, although sometimes that doesn't really hold them. They almost stick out, I think, a little more when they're short. I'm just going to go ahead and get this down real good. And I'm just going to repeat that process in other scenes. Once your double-sided tape is on, go ahead and box your corners. And you want to make sure that the seam, your side seam, matches your bottom seam. The great thing about boxing corners like this a lot of times is it almost does it naturally. Once you get those side seams sewn, So I'm going to actually stand the bag up, you know, push this down, and I'm going to stitch right across at a half inch seam allowance. I am going to trim this down a little bit, and then we will do the other side. Now, because this bag has a divider, I'm going to do a drop-in lining. It just makes it a lot easier when you have that divider than trying to turn it. 
So I'm going to turn this bag So here's the exterior. We will have our clasp here. And because the divider is going to be pulling this in, it should behave properly. So let's move on to the lining. The first thing I want to do with the lining is take my center divider piece and fold it in half. I'm going to fold it in half wrong sides together and I'm just going to baste it. You can go ahead and press this top with the iron, which actually I think I'm gonna go do that real quick. I'm gonna to top stitch that and then baste around the rest. So we have our divider. Let's go ahead and put our pockets on our main parts of our bag. So I'm going to find the center first. I'm going to take my zipper overlay. We'll put some double-sided tape on there. And since we do not have a top zipper, we can actually put this a little closer to the top if you'd like. So I'm going to put mine, and I know I'm going to have a half inch seam allowance for my upper lining. So I'm going to put mine about two inches from the top, which is going to make it about an inch and a half when the whole bag is done. So let me center it. We'll stitch around the outside first, and then we will stick that zipper in. All right, let's cut this opening out. And you know that this does not have to be neat or pretty, does not have to be, and actually you don't want it even with the zipper overlay, you want it to be inside of that a little bit so you don't see the lining peeking out. Do not like linings peeking out. It's one of my least favorite things. Okay, so we have a fairly messy back, no problem. We have a beautiful front. So we're gonna put some double-sided tape on the actual zipper. And I usually put it right along the edge of the zipper tape itself.
If you like hack videos like this, leave me a comment below and tell me you want to see more of them. I had someone recently ask me about doing more of them, which is why you're seeing me post some. And I've been able to get out and do a little bit of inspiration shopping and hunting on the internet. But just let me know what your favorite kind of video is that I do. All right, I'm going to center this in here. And then we're going to stitch around the inside edge. Get that zipper in. pull my threads through to the back. With black, I'm not usually as worried about not back stitching because you can't see it as much. But I still want to make sure I get in the same hole. In back stitching, you literally just need to do one stitch. You don't need to back stitch for, you know, a thousand stitches or anything. <laughs> Since we're doing a drop in lining, we are going to close this entire pocket. So I'm going to put a few clips on here and then we will cut this bottom piece off, which you will always have if you do a pocket like this. And then we'll stitch around. I've got some extra zipper here, an extra pocket, so I'm going to go ahead and cut those off. I'm going to touch the zipper with some heat, melt it. And then we will put the slip pocket on the other side. So again, I'm going to find my center. I'm going to position this about two inches down because we have our overlay here, which is why we only went down an hour, an hour and a half, listen to me, an inch and a half. Or actually we went down two inches here too, didn't we? I think we did. We did. All right, we're gonna go down two inches over here as well. Let's see. Get it centered. This pocket is pretty small. I am going to just stitch around. I'm not going to divide it at all. go ahead and add some rivets in the corners. I like to do that because I believe that these pockets sometimes have quite a bit of tugging and pulling on them and it can't hurt. 
So I'm just going to punch holes in the very corners. I'm also going to punch holes in some Decoville Heavy. I always keep little scraps handy. And then we'll put some rivets in here. You put our Decoville Heavy on top. And I'll go ahead and get these set. We have the rivets set on, so we're going to add our upper lining next. So go ahead and clip the upper lining to each of your main lining pieces. I am going to slide my key fob in here. And where you put that is up to you. There is no rule on that. All right, we're going to stitch. So now make sure that your lining is going towards the top of the bag and let's top stitch. From here we want to put our center divider in, but before we do that we want to go ahead and mark the center of what's going to be your back side. And actually I'm going to have this as my back side because I don't want my zipper pockets to be against each other. And this is just to put the base part of the twist lock. So I'm just going to mark my center there. I want to mark up, let's say, ten, up one inch in the center. And that's where the base of this twist lock is going to go. So let's go ahead and install that. I am going to put a little piece of Decaville Heavy behind there just because it's going to have some pulling and stuff on it and I just want to give it a little extra support. So let me get the Decaville Heavy. We'll put that on. 
and then we'll put the washer on. I'm just gonna go tap that with a hammer to make sure it's down good and tight. From here, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to put this divider in without getting any tucks at the bottom of your divider. And what you're gonna do is start out by marking the side of the divider by your seam allowance. And our seam allowance is a half inch. So I'm gonna draw a line a half inch in with chalk up each side. I want to show this to you. I got this from Hannah Woodworking at So Magical in Florida. Isn't it beautiful? It is absolutely gorgeous. Becky is amazing. So if you get a chance, go over to her website and check her out. She will, I'm sure, send you some awesome stuff. Okay, so when you put this divider on, you don't want to put it above your upper lining. You want to put it just below the upper lining. And in addition, I want to make sure that the side of the lining is up against that line. I'm going to base this on just using about an eighth of an inch seam allowance or even a quarter. As long as it's not half inch, as long as it's smaller than our seam allowance, we're okay. And I'm actually gonna pull this bottom up just a little bit because we're gonna sew this seam. So I'm gonna start, when I start actually sewing from the bottom, I'm gonna start also about a half inch in. So you see there, that's where I started and stopped. From here, I'm going to cut this off, but I'm not gonna cut it all the way to bottom. Right with the lining stops for right now, I'm just gonna cut and then I'm gonna cut it even with the lining. Okay, so now I have something that looks like this. You want to line the other side of the lining up now even with the side you sewed. Okay, so here's our, here's our divider. We're going to line this side up. We want to match our upper linings perfectly. And we're going to come all the way down and clip. Now, when I sew this, I want to stop at that half inch line so that it gives me a place to box my corners. And I'm actually going to do it from this side, so let me mark it on this side. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that my upper linings match really well. That's where I'm going to start. I am going to take a little bit larger seam allowance as I go. And I'm going to stop right about at that dot. Okay, so you see I stopped. So now on this side, we're going to have to pull this divider over. We're going to line it up again right underneath our upper lining. And we want to match the side of the lining with that line we drew. And we're going to base that on. And I'm going to stop about a half inch short. So now that that's sewn, we're going to go ahead and cut off the excess from the divider. I'm trying to decide if going to the end matters. I'm not sure, so I'm going to just cut it even. 
I'll let you know that in just a minute. Okay, so now here's what we have. We're going to take the other side of the, of the lining and we're going to match it up. And of course, we're going to have all this extra bit here because we have to form our sides. So let's line up our upper linings. I'm going to make a mark a half inch in. And let's go ahead and stitch. I'm going to stop right at my dot. From here, we're going to box our corners first. That's the key to getting a no tuck divider here in the middle. So fold your corner like you're going to box it and fold it all the way to the edge, just like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew this and we're going to only sew it as far as we can before hitting our existing stitch. Okay, so basically we're going to sew from our existing stitch out. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. And this side. And this side. Okay, so before I sew the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and box this corner, sewing from the existing stitch that I have. all the way to the corner on each side. And you want to try to make sure that stays nice and straight. And I actually found that it's almost easier to stitch from the outside in because your needle can get closer. All right, and we did a little back stitch. You do the same thing on each of the four corners. But. So let me show you what this looks like right now. So from the bottom, we have our still opened, okay? But you see that stitched and that stitched. So from the side, it almost looks like that boxed corner is already done, except for our bottom isn't sewn. And one more stop. So now, this is what we have. We've got a boxed corners in both sides, and we have a bottom that's open. We're gonna close the bottom of the bag. So I found the center of my lining pieces. I'm going to go ahead and find the center of my divider so that I can make sure everything is lined up nice and straight. Now obviously it'd be easier to do this in the beginning instead of trying to do it now, but no worries, we can get it done. So now I'm gonna line up my centers. We've cut that extra half inch off, so everything should match up good. We can just line it up and then go ahead and clip it. Now 
you what's going to happen is you're going to sew right across this bottom right where your stitches left off from your boxing of the corners and then your divider inside won't have any tucks or pleats in it at the corners. So I'm just going to stitch from where I left off at this boxing of the corner all the way down to this one over here and then we'll stop. Don't go beyond this. I'm going to go all the way to the other side. And then from here, we'll trim back this seam allowance. And now, when you look inside, you will see that your divider is not leaning in one direction or the other. It's nice and flat and there's no tucks down there at the bottom. So that's what we're aiming for. So from here, let's go ahead and get the lining in the bag. We're going to put some double-sided tape along the top. We're going to make sure we open our seam allowances. And I'm going to use my Decaville light as my guide as to where to fold because my Decaville light was placed a half inch from the top of the bag on both the upper lining and on the top of the bag, the top band over there on the other one we did. All right, let's fold this over. And I'm using quarter inch double sided tape and I'm using it right along the edge. That will keep it out of my seam allowance because I'm gonna stitch this on about an eighth of an inch from the edge. And that's going to work out perfectly. Now, if you'd prefer to use half inch, you certainly can. Just know that that tape might get in your seam allowance. So we have all that folded over. And you see how this bag is very square. That lining, that divider just pulls it right in. So we're going to do the same thing on the top of this bag. We're going to put some double-sided tape all the way around the top edge. Okay. Okay, you can I think see it on there. I'm just going to peel the backing off and fold this over as well. We're going to use that Decaville as a guide. Before you fuse your Decaville, you can certainly measure the half inch. I do that a lot to make sure that it is a true half inch from the edge. And that way everything's nice and even. Okay, so we now have that done. So let's put the lining inside the bag. 
Now, one thing when I do this is I really don't want my two zipper pockets to be back to back, so I just make sure that I turn that around so it's not. So we're going to put it in. We're going to match our seam allowances on the side. And this is the spot where you might have problems top stitching because you do have quite a bit of faux here. If you do have a problem with it, what I suggest is stitching up to the seam, do a little back stitch or do something to secure your stitches, skip over it and start on the other side. That little bit there is not going to be any problem for not having it top stitch. Nobody will ever know. See. So we're gonna match these up. Now, if you're afraid of this slipping, you can certainly put more double-sided tape in here to hold it so that as you sew this, it all stays together. Make sure everything's pushed down in there real good. I think one more clip over here. And there we have it. Isn't that pretty? And the good thing about the divider is that it holds the bag nice and square. So then when we pull this in, it's going to kind of give us that bubble effect at the top, just like the inspiration bag. So I'm going to go over to the cylinder arm machine so I can top stitch this. It is possible. A few people have asked me, you know, can I top stitch this bag on the industrial? You can. It might be a little difficult if you want to do it from the right side. If your stitches look good on both sides, just do it from the inside and go all the way around. But I'm going to go ahead and, um, and do it on the industrial or on the um, cylinder arm. The other thing I'm going to do, and I'll show you when I get over there, is I don't want the lining, this upper lining in the band to pull away from each other when the bag closes. So if we do this, and my finger isn't right there, the upper linings are going to separate. So what I'm probably going to do is end up stitching around or stitching to the right and left, somehow stitching the, it together here so that this won't pull away. Does that make sense? Because as you close this, this piece might pull and it may not, I don't know, I'll look at it first before I do that and see. The other thing is I may want to stitch a little bit down the seam, almost like stitch in the ditch to hold these sides in so that the sides aren't pulling away either. So let's see how it all works out. I'm gonna hop over there. First thing we're gonna do is top stitch and then we'll go from there. Here we are, we're gonna go ahead and start. I'm gonna start here at one of the side seams. So go around.
actually think that this is going to be fine because when I pull this as if I'm going to close it, it's not pulling away, but the sides are. So I'm going to just try to do a couple of stitches right on top of my top stitching here to hold these sides in. So that, whoops, that's why you don't put your finger there. So it got caught. Okay, so I'm just gonna stick this in. So I can get down in there and try to get in the same holes and just do a little tacking stitch there. All right, so you can't hardly even see it, it's right there. And you can see the difference in these two sides how this one's pulling away and this one is not. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Try to get in that same hole, top stitching hole. Okay, and see how those sides are staying in a lot better there? All right, so we need to go ahead and put our other part of our twist lock on and our handles and then we'll be done. So I'm just finishing up putting my the other side of my twist lock in. So now when we close it, it's what we have. So I'm going to go ahead and put my, I've decided to go ahead and go with um, the rectangle rings and I'm going to put the riveted handle connectors on. So in the original Bircham pattern, I'm going to refer you back to that video. I'll tell you the exact measurements and how to do this. Of course, that's a crossbody. We use D-rings and swivel clasps instead. You can do it however you like since it is your bag. So I'm just going to put this on and mark. So I'm just sliding it over and marking with my pen where to punch the hole. I mean, coming. I think a 10 millimeter rivet will do. We'll see. Yep, looks like that's going to be perfect. So I'll do the same thing with this side. They put the handle on, and we will be done. Yeah. Wait. 
so cute. All right, I'm gonna go set these rivets. I'm gonna do the same thing with my handle. I'm just gonna go ahead and put rivets and attach it directly to these rectangle rings, and then we'll take a look at the bag. So here we are, the Bircham hack. Isn't it cool? It really came out looking like the original. It, it's really great. I love these hacks. They're so much fun. Because you get to do something different with the pattern. So when you buy a pattern, you don't have to do the same old thing over and over. This gives you an opportunity to do something new. So just like the original, of course, we have this little twist lock to open and close it. When you open it up, we have this really nice interior with a center divider. I know it's always hard to see the interior. There you go. And it just, of course, we have our little zipper pocket like we did in the back. I just think that's much more functional than two zipper pockets here in the front. As I mentioned, I just put a straight handle on here so that it just sits, sits just about the right length. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I'm going to refer you back to the original Bircham for some of the things that we didn't go over in this video. But I hope you enjoyed the Bircham hack. So until next time, happy sewing.